greet you in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, and not just the name of Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. Do you remember that morning or that day or that night when the Lord Jesus Christ washed your sins away? Oh, happy day. I will never forget. Never, ever, ever. That moment is so vivid in my heart. I will never forget the day when Jesus washed my sins away. He signed me up, put my name on the roll, and my name has been sealed with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. And it's the same for you. Praise God. We greet you, neighbor. We greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you are here. Praise God. I am so glad that you are here with us today. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Tammy Nichols, can I get a witness? Amen. From out there in Ohio. Come on, Tammy. Come on and give us a witness. She says, hi, amen. Hi, Pastor Carter. Praise God. Thank you, Tammy. Andy Mack, can we get a witness up there in Connecticut that Jesus Christ is Lord? Come on, somebody. We greet you. We greet you. We greet you. We greet you. Thank you. Andy Mack says, says amen. Linda Barrett, can we get a witness from out there in central Pennsylvania and all over the nation, all over the world? Can we get a witness? Bishop Elijah, if you're on live with us now in Kenya, I want you to open your phone and come on and say something to us. Amen. Do that now. If you're online with us in Kenya right now, come on and give us a testimony. Praise God. We greet you. We greet you. Facebook family. Facebook family, we greet you. We greet you in the name of Jesus. We greet you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for all of you who are online with us today. We serve a mighty God. Ladies and gentlemen, we serve a mighty God. I've got a mighty message for you, but I just feel good deep down in my sanctified soul because this time last week, I was sick. Man, I couldn't come online. I was sick. I was too sick to move, but praise God, the Back to Basics online church is online again. I want to thank you all for your prayers. Tammy Nichols sent out a prayer call on Facebook, and so many of you prayed for me, and all over the world, people were praying for me, and praise God, amen, amen, that flu hit me, and it only lasted a couple days, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, now I can walk, talk, shout, jump. Praise God, worship him, and I feel good deep down in my sanctified soul, and I declare in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ is Lord, and the devil is a liar. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter what you are going through, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. I just thank God for you. A shout out to my son, Wes, daughter-in-law, Marisol, my grandchildren, all my children, all my friends, all over this nation, all over the world. We present Jesus Christ, the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, uh, tested by Pontius Pilate, crucified, buried. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven where he sits at the right hand of the throne of God, and he's coming back again. We have in church today, ladies and gentlemen. This is not your traditional church. Amen. You don't have to sit there looking puffed up and scared to look around, wondering who's looking at you. Amen. You can lift up your hands in your bedroom, your living room, your kitchen, your car, or under a tree in the park, and you can declare where you are. Jesus is Lord. It is not about the brick 
and more to church. It is not about being in a certain building at the same time. It's where the spirit of God is. There is liberty. You ought to feel free today. You ought to feel free today. No matter what's troubling you, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. We bless God. So we praise God for you. We thank God. We thank God for this worldwide ministry. I'm waiting on Bishop uh, Bishop uh, Elijah Weenan to come in, amen, from Kenya. If he can break in and say hello to us, uh, we're looking forward to that. He just came back from a mighty mission representing Back to Basics Ministries in the Philippines, ladies and gentlemen. Bishop Elijah is our bishop. We ordained him as our bishop and our ambassador for East Africa, and he just came back from a week's visit in the Philippines. He sent me a message today. He preached the gospel, and a man got saved. He was a Muslim, and they had to rush him out of town into another city because his family wanted to kill him because he received Jesus Christ as Lord. Shame, shame, shame. You Muslims ought to repent and believe in Jesus Christ as Lord. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves killing people because they believe in Jesus. You're gonna to have to stand before God Almighty and give an account and you're gonna, if you don't get saved, Muslims, you're gonna burn in hell. Don't you prevent anybody from receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. And I appeal to you Muslims who are listening, and I know some of you are listening, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. Confess the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. This God that we serve, he is no respecter of persons. He loves everybody. He made you in his image. He made you to worship him. And if you will call upon the name of the Lord, no matter who you are, you may be black, you may be white, you may be brown, you may be fat, you may be skinny, you may be tall, you may be short, you may be rich, you may be poor, you may be Muslim, you may be Hindu, you may be atheist, you may be agnostic, but if you will repent of your sins and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We only take a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen, on Sunday morning, but we want you to get the word of God. We want to be in the anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's not like going down to church on the corner where you have to listen to a half hour of announcements. It's not like going to that church on the hill where they take three or four offerings. It's not all like that church on the corner where the politicians come and talk for a half hour lying to you to get your vote. We preach Jesus Christ crucified, buried, risen again from the dead and soon to come again. And we show you how to get saved. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. So we thank you. We thank you. Those who are live with us on Facebook right now, we praise God. This is not your normal routine church. This is an anointed ministry, a worldwide ministry where we preach over and over and over and over again that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. It's the same message over and over and over again and we pray that you will hear the word of God and that you will receive Jesus as Lord, and then that you will tell somebody else about Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, tell your family, tell your co-workers, tell your neighbors, tell your politicians, tell your leaders, tell them that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Tell those people in your life, in your life to repent of their pride and to Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in the last days. These are the last days. I praise God that so many of you come on to this ministry, listen to us 
on Facebook Live and watch the videos because you're getting the word of God. You're realizing that time is running out. This is not like CNN or ABC or CBS or KYW or Fox News where they take out commercials and present uh, things for you to buy. This is not like your usual uh, news station where they spin a story and lie and point the finger and pass the buck. We preach the truth of the gospel. God wants you to be saved. These are the last days. I wonder, can I get a witness in the chat window? You believe these are the last days and God wants you to be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, it is expedient that we preach the gospel, that we show you. Young people, you need to know that Jesus is Lord, not your favorite rap group. You need to know that Jesus is Lord and that God has the plan. God has the plan. God has the plan. So get in on the plan, ladies and gentlemen. Get in on the plan and get saved and stay saved. Stay saved. Praise God. We thank God. We thank God. I praise God. Hallelujah. I thank God that I'm able to wake up this morning. Thank God I can see your name on the attendees list. I thank God that I can see your name on the phone list. I thank God that we can fellowship together. Church is where two or more gather in the name of Jesus. We gather in the name of Jesus. We build one another up. We edify one another. We exhort one another. We worship God together. Where two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus, there he is in the midst of us. Praise God. Uh, somebody said, there's no video. If there's no video, switch over to the phone. Switch over to the phone. But there should be video. Praise God. My camera says that there's video. So switch over to phone if there's no video. We praise God. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. We bless God. We bless God. Yes, my system says there's video. Praise God. So we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We bless the Lord. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, we can do nothing without you. And Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and I present to you all of these listeners, all who are burdened, heavy laden, people with issues, challenges. Everybody has problems. Satan's trying to destroy us all. But Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to you, Lord, giving thanks to you, Lord God. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Thou art worthy to be praised. Thou art worthy to be praised. So we bless you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, and we thank you, Father. Lord, thank you for your anointing. Let your word go forth. Strengthen your people. Many are suffering from sickness. Many are hurting. Many are having financial difficulties. Many have problems in their families in their marriages. Lord, in this nation, God, we have a, a plethora of, of problems. Lord, that's a big word, plethora. You know what it means. We have a multitude of problems and only you can solve them. And so, Father, we ask that you intervene, intervene, intervene. You said, if my people, which are called by my name, will, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven. You will forgive our sins and you will heal our land. So Lord, do this, do this for us. Do this, stretch forth your mighty hand, God. And we give you the glory. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Let the church say amen. Praise God. We wanna take a little time out right now and ask any listener, who feels led to do so, to give a short testimony about what God is doing in your life, or just come on, uh, unmute your phone and say hello to us, whoever you are. Make it brief, but come on.
The world is waiting for you. Come on with your testimony. Well, bless God, you had a chance, you had a chance, you had a chance. So uh, be that as it may, let's take a look at today's message. Today's message, I have a message that's going to bless you. It's going to set you free. It's going to help a lot of people. Turn with me in your Bible to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. To Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. And we're going to look at this message today, God has the answer. God has the answer. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and answer me, I will come in and sup with him. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him. We thank God for that word. We thank God. And then we ask you to flip over to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, and we'll be sharing a portion of that scripture. Everybody has their own opinions about mass murders, gun violence, government corruption, what the government ought to be doing. Should we pass more gun control? Should we enforce the gun control we already have? Everybody has their own opinion about the NRA. Some say the government's scared of the NRA and so they're afraid to pass gun legislation. Everybody's got their own opinion about, about mass murderers. Some say they are confused people. They are victims. Everybody's got an opinion. All over Facebook, we see people's opinion. All over Twitter, we see people's opinions. All over the, the social media, we see people's opinions. But I want to give you today what God's opinion is. What's God saying about all this violence, all these killings, all this sin, all this lust, all this corruption? What is God saying about this? Because what God has to say about it is what really matters to us. You can have your opinion. I can have my opinion. People don't want my opinion. But it's what does God say about this? And I want to appeal to those of you who turn your backs on God that you need to wake up, smell the coffee. Time is running out. God is, God is begging for you to hear from him. He's sending messenger after messenger after messenger. And God wants to save you. He wants to get your attention. He wants to save you from this wicked world system. Ladies and gentlemen, being a Republican is not going to save you. Ladies and gentlemen, being a Democrat is not going to save you. You can start a third party movement. You can be an independent but that will not save you. What does it profit a man, the Bible says, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What's it going to profit you if you spend all of your life at the Republican headquarters or the Democratic headquarters pushing this forum and pushing that forum and that legislation what is it going to profit you if you spend all of your life, all of your fortune supporting a candidate and, 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 and building up that candidate and spinning lies about that person and, and, and kissing up to that person, spending, what's it going to profit you if you spend your whole life following a man or a woman and denying Jesus Christ access to your life. Ladies and gentlemen, what's it going to take to wake up America? What's it going to take to wake up the nations? It's pitiful what's happening in England, in France, in Germany, in China, in Israel, 
in Russia, in Korea, in North Korea, in Pakistan. It's pitiful what's happening in the United States of America as people ally themselves behind people, behind political parties, behind political movements, and deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you know this is my father's world? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Come on, somebody. God is in charge of everything. He has not abdicated the throne. He's not given up uh, the royal scepter. He is in charge. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Not the Republican Party, not the Democratic Party, not your local politician, not your pastor, not your bishop. Some of you bishops think you're kahunas. You've got people following you, everything coming out of your mouth. They're believing it. And, and I blame, I blame you church folks. I blame you pastors for believing everything these bishops are saying. I blame you for listening to people rather than listening to God. But God said in his word, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. Ladies and gentlemen, it, the blame is not God. The blame is on us. We have the responsibility to humble ourselves. Are you too proud to humble yourself? You still think your mama has the answer or your daddy has the answer or because your mama built the church or because your daddy laid the foundation and you keep going to that church and then you keep getting corrupt pastors in there, manipulating pastors and uh, womenizers and some are menizers and, and some are druggies and some are greedy for money, but you still let them pass to you. You still follow them. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not God's fault. It's your fault. It is your fault if you keep on sitting under ungodly people, if you keep on receiving ungodly messages. It's your fault if you're not praying. It's your own fault if you're not seeking God and studying his word. I know this is tight, but it's right. And I make no apology for what I preach. It is our responsibility to seek the Lord while he may be found. It is our responsibility to seek the Holy Spirit to discern who's right and who's wrong. It is our responsibility to, to determine what is real news and what is fake news. Ladies and gentlemen, many, many people, so many are being deceived by the enemy. And they believe that what they hear or what they see is the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He controls the airwaves. He controls the social media. He is in control. He sets up what is news on the media. He spins a story and you have to have discernment. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you cannot discern. And you can't have the Holy Ghost unless you have Jesus. And so it is our responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, to seek the Lord while he may be found. Ladies and gentlemen, billions of people are being deceived all over the world. They're being manipulated by leaders, even charismatic leaders, so-called spiritual leaders, religious leaders. But you have the responsibility, John Q. Public or Jane S. Public, you have the responsibility to discern for yourself and find out if this person you're following is preaching the truth or if this what you see on TV is truth or if this text message is true. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting sick and tired of people sending me messages, texting me messages on my Facebook page and saying, make this go viral. No, I ain't making nothing go viral. Amen. Because a lot of you don't even read some of that stuff you want me to send out. And I am sending out mess. If it's not right, if it's not truth, I will not forward it. Let me choose 
what I forward to people. Let me choose what I preach. Let the Holy Ghost show me what to preach. But a lot of you are reading this stuff. You're following people. You're going on their opinions. You're going on their ideas. And some of them don't even read the stuff they're forwarding to you. And a lot of it's coming straight from hell. Ladies and gentlemen, if you expect me to forward a message and that message has hate in it, forget it. I'll shut you down. Ladies and gentlemen, if you expect me to forward a message and it's full of racism, I will shut you down. I'm talking to black people and white people. If you send me a message that puts black people down, I'll shut you down. If you send me a message that puts white people down, I will shut you down. If you send me a message that is divisive, I will shut you down. I will not forward. I don't care who you are. You could be a family member, but if it's not right, if it's divisive, if it's promoting falsehood, if it's promoting divisiveness, promoting bitterness, promoting racism, promoting hatred, I will not forward it. Please, so please don't waste your time sending me this mess. I will forward something that will edify the church. I will forward something that will build up the body of Christ. But let me make the decision. Let me seek God. And many of you need to seek God before you put your endorsement on a lot of this mess that's going through the social media. You need to seek God. Some of you need to seek God before you open your mouths. Some of you need to seek God before you leave your house. Some of you need to seek God before you go to the grocery store. Some of you need to seek God before you answer your telephone. Because everybody calling you is not of God. Everybody who has a message is not of God. So seek the Lord while he may be found. I say seek the Lord while he may be found. I know this is tight, but it's right. Ladies and gentlemen, what has happened to this world? That nobody wants to read their Bibles anymore. What is happening to this world? That no one wants to read the word of God. What is happening to this world? That no one wants to hear from Jesus. What is happening to this world where millions of people will run to the movie but won't run to church? Come on, somebody. And, and, and millions of people will run to a popular movie because everybody's watching it. They're talking about a uh, Black Panther or they're talking about this or that, ladies and gentlemen. And, and most of those people will not even spend 10 minutes with God on a Sunday morning. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, what's happening to this world. Satan is a liar. He's a deceiver, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let him deceive you. Don't let him deceive you. Don't let him get you into pro promoting hatred and divisiveness and, and a lack of love towards one another. Satan hates it when you love one another. He's the author of hatred. But you can shut him down, ladies and gentlemen. You can put him on the run by taking a stand and saying, I will promote the gospel. I will promote the love of Jesus Christ. I'm going to walk in the love of Jesus Christ. You may say, well, what's this have to do with mass murders and shootings and AR-15s and the National Rifle Association and people killing one another? It has nothing at all to do with it. It has not. Well, what's this have to do with adultery, fornication, the gay lifestyle, homosexuality, lesbianism? Absolutely nothing. I'm not preaching about that. I'm preaching about you knowing the truth. I'm preaching about you discerning what the media is trying to put on you. I'm preaching that you have to have enough Jesus in you to know whether a story is true and whether it's not. And if you don't know, then you ought to have such a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that you can ask him. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Don't you know that every situation you run into has an answer? God has the answer. But if you don't turn to God, if you don't believe in God, then you'll accept anything. You'll accept anything. But you need to learn how to pray. We, we preach this on Back to Basics Ministries. 
We go back to basics, back to the word of God, back to prayer, back to the word of God, back to loving one another, back to praise and worship. Let's go back to the basics. Some of you have gotten so far out that you're lost. And God wants you to be found. And so every one of us ought to stop where we are right now. Stop, drop, and roll. Stop what you're doing. Drop what you're doing. Roll every care unto Jesus. Give your heart. Roll your heart to Jesus. And make sure that you know that you know that you know that you are saved, that you are saved. A lot of churches don't preach salvation. They preach, if you've been baptized, you're going to go to heaven. Or they preach, join the church and you'll go to heaven. Or they preach, come and join our fellowship and you'll go to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not true. These are lies. Baptism does not get you into heaven. Joining the church does not get you into heaven. Some people say, well, send me $100 a month and I'll, I'll, I'll pray for you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're sending them $100 a month will not get you into heaven. You must be born again. Ladies and gentlemen, you must be born again. It is written, Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So God has the answer. You need to stop, drop, and roll. You need to stop and give God some time. You need to stop what you're doing. Stop your busy schedule. Stop texting everybody. Stop call, calling everybody. Stop forwarding their messages. And drop, drop to knee bone station. And roll your life over to Jesus. And make an exchange. Give him your life. And he'll give his life to you. Give Jesus your life. And he'll give life to you. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. I am come. He said, the reason why I'm here is that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. America, slow down. Europe, slow down. Africa, slow down. Everybody, slow down. Call time out and assess your life. Have you received the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you walking in righteousness? And in holiness? Or are you being led by the Spirit of God? Or are you studying the Word of God? Do you have a personal relationship and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Because if you don't, you need to get right with God. Being a member of the political party, the ruling political party, or the populist movement, that will not save you. Being a member of the Chamber of Commerce or the, uh, this social group will not save you. Sitting in a pew in a popular church will not save you. You must be born again. You must be born again. Businessman, you must be born again. You can have millions of dollars, but that money cannot save you. Whoever you are, good looking person, pretty person. Your good looks, your prettiness will not save you. You must be born again. Well, how can I be born again, preacher? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, Back to Basics Ministries online church. We preach Christ Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Everybody has an answer to the mass murders, the killings, the shootings, the violence, the finger pointing, the corruption in the government. Everybody's got an answer about what's happening in America and what's happening in the nations. And everybody's off base. God has the answer. God has the answer. 
God has the answer. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Jesus is knocking. He's knocking. He's knocking on your door today through me, this preacher, through other preachers, through people who walk up to your door to, to tell you about Jesus, to people who smile at you in the mall, to people who tell you that uh, lo Jesus loves you and God bless you. He's knocking at your door. But are you listening? Or are you listening? Do you want to listen? Do you want to be saved? Do you want to be saved? That little maiden girl, that little slave girl, asked um, the great warrior when he came to to Isaiah to be to be healed, and Isaiah told him to dip in the Jordan seven times, and he didn't want to do it. He said, "We got clean water up in Syria," and his maiden said to him, "Do you want?" to be delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, there's only one way to be saved, and that's through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the risen Savior. There's no other name under heaven given whereby we must be saved. So you can run, but you can't hide. I say stop your running. Stop, drop, and roll, and roll your life into the hands of Jesus so that he can make you what he created you to be. I say he can make you by the power of the Holy Spirit into what he created you to be. It is not too late. It is not too late. Second Timothy chapter three tells us that in the last days, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of pleasure, lovers of themselves. They will be abusers. They will be murderers. They will be doing this. They will be doing that. They will be lying. They will be deceiving. They will deceive the very elect. Ladies and gentlemen, all hell is breaking loose in this world because these are the last days. The Bible tells us. But Jesus said, behold, he said, listen, I stand at the door and knock. Jesus said, if any person hears my voice and opens the door, he said, I will come in and sup with him. And he with me. He said, I will come in and live with him and he with me. And ladies and gentlemen, it can't get any better than that. It can't get any better than that. I say to all my friends in Africa, in the various nations listening to this ministry, I say to all my friends in Europe and all the nations listening to this ministry, I say to my friends in South America, in the Caribbean, all of my friends in America, all across this great nation, surrender your life to Jesus. Rebuke that spirit of pride. Confess the spirit of pride. Tell God you're sorry for sinning against him. Tell him you're, re you're tired of rebelling against him and God will deliver you. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my friends put this message on Facebook just the other day. She said her child brought her a message and the child was uh, reciting another child who wrote a letter to God. This child wrote a letter to God and the letter said, God, why do you permit mass murders in our schools? And God sent an answer to that child, spoke to that child. And God said, it's because the schools have shut me out. They don't want me in. And ladies and gentlemen, the government has shut God out. They don't want God in. The federal government, the state government, your local government, the school system, the colleges, the universities, they don't want God in. And ladies and gentlemen, the sad thing is many churches have shut God out, won't let him in. But back to Basics Ministries, we welcome you, Lord God. We cannot exist without you. We love you, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We present Jesus Christ, crucified, buried, risen from the dead. Jesus is the answer. God has the answer. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the last days. Jesus is about to come back again. When he comes, people are going to run and try to hide 
from the devastation and the destruction. The Bible says the rocks will cry out when people try to hide in the rocks. The rocks will cry out, no hiding place. Where are you going to run when Jesus comes back? Ladies and gentlemen, if you receive Jesus right now as your Savior and Lord and make it your purpose to live for him, receive him as your Savior and Lord, you won't have to run. You'll be raptured. You'll be caught up with the church into heaven. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, and I encourage you, I beg you, get saved. Stay saved. Study your word. Stay in your word. Read your word daily. Pray daily. Develop a relationship with God. Talk to him. Learn how to hear his voice. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not in government. Not in your social security check. Not in your retirement income. Not in your job. Not in your paycheck. Not even in your friends. Not even in your family. Put your trust in the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord. For the Bible declares, blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. I thank God for this message. Let us pray. And after prayer, I'll stay on for a special announcement. Father God, I bless you, praise you, thank you and honor you. Thank you for this message today. God has the answer. Thank you that you have the answer. Oh, Lord God, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity, creating us clean hearts. Lord God, I'm praying today. I'm believing today that you're going to save a lot of souls today, that you're going to rescue the perishing, help the people to hear your voice. You said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Lord, help the people to hear you knocking. Help them to open the door. Help them to receive you, Lord Jesus. And I praise you and bless you and honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I feel good. I feel good. Tammy Nichols, I feel good about that message. Hey, Wes, I feel good, man. Your daddy feels good, man, to be able to preach again. That God woke me up on this Sunday morning to preach the word of God. Andy Mack, I praise God. Hey, Bishop Elijah, I praise God to all of my friends in every nation. I praise God for the opportunity to preach Jesus Christ. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. Hey, I want to make this special announcement. It's Black History Month. We celebrate Black History Month. Now let, now let me tell you this. Black History Month means that if you're black, you don't be putting white people down. If you're black, you don't be putting other people down. If you're black, it's the fact you were born black. Okay, you're black. But God is no respecter of persons. We're all made in his image. But because we celebrate the contributions of uh, blacks uh, during history, uh, and the fact that I'm black, I celebrate, but I don't put anybody down. I'm learning how to love everybody, no matter who you are, what your color is, where you're from, and what you do. Amen? Because God made you in his image. But here's our Black History Month special. My new book, here it is. You can see it in the, in the camera, Black Heroes of the Bible, new edition. Look at this beautiful book. You see two black hands coming up out of the Bible. I present this to you this month as a Black History Month special, my new edition, just hot off the press. Haven't even had it off the press for one week. The story of 21 black people in the Bible, 21 different people. Many of them are women. Read their stories. You can get this book for the cost of $25 plus the cost of shipping and handling. I don't really do commercials on this ministry, but I'm going to present this book, and it's good reading. It is good reading. Mmm, good. Just like Campbell's Soup. Mmm, good. 21 stories of blacks in the Bible who made biblical history true to the scriptures, ladies and gentlemen. 
And as a special bonus, if you order this book for only $25 plus the cost of shipping and handling, so you're looking at a total of about $35, I will give you a choice of one of my other books, The Giants Are Back, the story of why there's so much violence, so much murder, so much uh, going on in the world today, why the history of violence and why it has happened and what Satan's plan is to try to take people out. The giants are back. Good reading, ladies and gentlemen. And it tells you how you can put the devil under your feet or you can get a copy of a new paradigm for the church. What's a paradigm? A new way of thinking about the church, how the church, how the church uh, can get their heads up out of the sand and get away from that stinking thinking that they have to meet in a building every Sunday. But the church is the body of Christ and what God has called you to do. So the special this month is purchase Black Heroes of the Bible, the new edition, just hot off the press, and I'll give you a choice. Free, you'll get free. Either the giants are back or a new paradigm for the church. So that's uh, by sending uh, your information to me or getting in touch with me. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. You can get in touch with me uh, via my website, www.backtobasicsministries.wordpress.com. You can see this on one of the screens. My telephone is 404-205-1101. My email is LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. Hey, we're going to sign off first from our friends on Facebook. Thank you for coming on today live Facebook. We love you. We love you. Visit my Facebook pages, Leroy Carter or Back to Basics Ministries Incorporated. You can get in touch with me. I'll be glad to hear from you. I want to hear from you. So have a great day, Facebook family. And then we're going to ask we're going to ask our folks on go to meet me stay on stay on board with us praise god praise god oh this is a wonderful day oh happy day oh happy day when jesus washed my sins away oh happy day praise god man i feel good i feel good deep down in my sanctified soul i feel good and I thank God. Thank you again for your prayers. Thank you for your love. You keep on loving one another and let the Lord have his way. So we've got a couple minutes. We've got a couple minutes. And uh, we ask that you come on, unmute your phones. Please feel free to say hello. Uh, good morning. Praise God. Good morning, Dr. McBride. Uh, yeah, I, 